Welcome back to Tectonica. My name is Nilans and we are back here with another episode of this uh, showcase of Tectonica, which is an early alpha. So there's a lot of things that are just, yeah, not quite ready yet. Uh, thank you very much for your support on the first episode. That is really what uh, motivates me to keep going on making more stuff. But there's also another thing that really motivates me to get, make another episode is that the first episode, we showed a bit about how the world looks, how the UI works, what the game is about, but we didn't actually build any factories. So objective for this one is how does it feel to build a factory in this game. In order to do that, I'll explain, by the way, what we are seeing on screen. If you're kind of unfamiliar with it, then uh, we'll explain it, uh, what I've done in preparation. So the objective here is to make 70 mining drills, 70 smelters, 2,000 conveyor belts, 1,000 inserters, and 1,000 processing units all in one episode so that by the end of the episode, I can click this button. And by then, I'm sure that you will be subscribed to the channel and have also made sure that you liked this video. I am sure. Thank you. Right, so let's uh, talk a bit about what I've done in preparation. I have made this uh, floor. This is electrified floor, so anything I put on it is also uh, already electrified. We have uh, these things. They are assemblers. They are basically, well, assemblers like you would imagine. Uh, this, uh, you can see here the dots up in the corner is how many inputs are needed for each of those. And basically what, we, uh, what we're building is, well, we need to get that in. So that's going to be the core of the factory building. Anything that's placed here on this electrical grid is powered and it's powered with these uh, very much placeholder crank operators that you need to every five minutes. Look at how the five minutes is displayed. Yeah, well, it's alpha, it's placeholder. Uh, no, pre no reason to fix that until you actually fix the graphics as well. Uh, and these other placeholders are actually uh, accumulators. So it's basically some batteries. That means you don't have to click every five minute, but just generally. What I've also done is I have set up a ungodly amount of these. Uh, what are they called? These are the uh, let's see over here the tech things uh, so i have 120 of those that means i have now unlocked all the things that we have found in this cave i've been exploring this cave and just found a lot of things we can obviously only get to this part we can not unlock the Lima, the victor level which is what we're going to be doing today i've also set up a, a basic mining that just similar to what we've done before this is a basic mining of of uh, iron parts and smelting so we get that in on a belt i will do the same or i have done the same thing over on the side for uh yeah what is it that's for copper of course right so the first thing we want to do is actually uh let's go in here with all of our residual things here that should be no it's not needed <clears throat> the first thing i want to do is actually not build iron and copper uh, production it is to build something here a planter and then a thresher so we can shred the plants into uh, usable parts for fueling of our smelters and miners. So that's going to be the first thing. And that will be sort of a little loop that will kind of illustrate some of the ideas. I'm going to build it out here-ish, but not uh, uh, not overlapping with uh, this belt coming in. And I will just stamp it down randomly here. Yeah, that seems to be good. Okay, so what I do I need to build in here? I need to put these seeds in here. Uh, apparently you can only see what they are if you are here. These are Kindle vines, Kindle vine seeds, and those can be used to make more Kindle vine, and the Kindle vine can then be shredded into some plant materials. So that's good. First thing we want to do is take a belt out here, and then we need to do a planters, and that's not a planter. Uh, do I not have the planters marked? No, I do not. That is my planter. Let's mark it here and then also the shredder up here so that we at least have them that is f4 and where do we want to build them i can build them here but i don't think i can run through that corner if i do it so let's build it here and here that one and that one right so let's uh, have a look i am using fast inserters uh, i have researched those and i'll be using those sometimes I also have a few of the normal ones. Uh, it seems pretty good to just use the default ones here. There, it's not gonna be particularly fast. All right, so that should get the whole thing going if I actually have this in here. Let's have a look at the very first little build here. Going out, going out, and what happens in this? We get like small seeds that will gradually grow up and become big Kindle vines. Good. Now that needs to go into a shredder that will, well, shred it. 
And that's still not a shredder. And I'll have the shredder up. That's the shredder. No, yes, it is. Uh, let's make sure that it gets... Hmm. <clears throat> so, let's see. What is it I want? Yes, let's build it like this. So, as this will require some fuel. But I also have a few of these Kindle Vines, actually. So, can I not do that? There we go. This Kindle Vine, and it doesn't have any fuel yet. So, I'm going to need to get some fuel. Any fuel. That one is a, that's a tiny bit of fuel. And that's fuel. That's all we need. We just need to get it started. And we also have a jetpack, uh, a hover pack, by the way, which comes nice and early. There. So this will now be taking the Kindle Vine and making it into some fuel. The, the great thing here about this is that it actually is self-fueling, which means that if you, oops, look at this. If I don't have anything here, you can see the outputs go first into the fuel to fuel itself and then secondarily into something else. Uh, auto planters, yeah, that's fine. And I will build that here. Okay, and this will also get some of that and some of that as well. Right, so now they have something output. This has two outputs, so we can either... Uh, this is better to look at the output device. What I'm going to do is I am simply going to take this into a box and... Yeah. I don't know if this is good or bad, but it's it's just the way that I'm going to do it. Uh, I don't think the race, the speed is particularly fast, so I think I can do this. I will do that one, and I'll do that one, and take that out. Good. So, they are now going in here, and we now have that. So, what we'll have in this one is the Kindle Vine, or the Plant Matter. This is Plant Matter. Uh, let's see. I'll have the Plant Matter. This is the whole point of uh, getting some plant matter. And I will also have some uh, some seeds that need to go back. But what we also do not have yet is the automated input here. So do that. And I will be making a long inserter because that will then fit and make it look somewhat nice. And there. So these are now outputting the Kindle vines. The Kindle vines go in and get shredded into becoming fuel that will feed itself as well as uh, seeds that will go in here. And I'm pretty sure it can keep up. Pretty sure, I hope. And I'll just go that. Get a longhand inserter and another longhand inserter and a short and fast inserter in there. So that is also now automated. So now we have automated all of this part. The only thing we do not have automated at this point is that it would be really cool if I could take take my seeds and go back into the original. Hmm. How would I do that? Well, that's going to require a special type of inserter called not surprisingly, a filter inserter. Now, it's nice and convenient that they have taken exactly the names from Factorio, but it also kind of feels like, uh, it's a bit it's a bit too much of, oh, they just took the Factorio names. And I will... I don't even know if that's fast enough, so I'll just take a normal inserter. Alright, so this is now a filter inserter, and the filter inserter obviously has to be filtered to take that one out. So now we have a complete little uh, self-sustained factory. What it will do is it will make... It'll take whatever seeds we find out in the world. It'll make the seeds grow up and become uh, Kindle Vine. The Kindle Vine will be shredded into fuel for itself, as well as uh, fuel plant matter over here. So gradually what we will see is that we will be emptying this one. We will not have any seeds in here and gradually there will be an accumulation of plant matter in this location. So that's nice. That means now if any, uh, we don't need to go out and find more plant matter. We have now a self-sustained little factory doing plant matter. That was not so hard. That was pretty good actually. I like it. Uh, next one. Now we're going to be messing with iron and copper. So let's, uh, I'm not going to make a bus or anything advanced here. Uh, we're just going to make like a little build that will get us what we need. And just to get a sense of how this game works in terms of building automation setups. So what I'm going to do is I will, as you can see here, just get an iron and copper next to each other. First of all, I think it's time for us to go back and hit the crank. 
again they just need to be uh, hit all once in a while every five minutes or every 300 seconds as you could say and there in the meantime uh this i don't think it's completely ready for prime time yet so uh what is it we want to make well we have these things that we want to make and that is we need 2000 conveyor belts we need 1000 uh 1000 inserters and we need 1000 production unit things what is it called uh processing units so what we're going to do is we're going to get our glorious uh, assembler which has a million inputs and outputs and i'm just going to make start it let's start it here so let's have a look at what this can make if this makes mm -hmm, uh where are you where are you you are going to be a belt yes so a belt requires uh i tend to say gears but what are they called they're called iron components so i need iron components and copper so basically what that means is that I can take a long headed inserter. There, that will now get the copper in. And I'll need to make another assembler next to it, like so. And this one will make the iron components. Uh, another thing that is uh, kind of uh, here, this now you say 0 0.5 seconds to build and logistics here, this is also 0 0.5. So this should be uh, evenly if they can get keep up with the inputs and outputs. Then I get an input here, and that will then also go over here. If this is fast enough, then that should be fast enough. And do we get stuff? Yes, we do. I'll also just put those in just because. And now we then need to put it into a little box. Should be pretty simple. Here's a container. And I will be making that here. Now, this is one of those things that I'm not super keen on. The fact that if we look at this, like this... This box only has one input on either side. I think that's a major issue because this one has two outputs. Why can this not have three outputs here, three outputs here, or three input outputs? Uh, because then on top of that, you can see it's not even fast enough. It will accumulate. So I need to build some kind of awful hack like this just in order for me to transfer all of it. And that's not pretty, is it? But it needs to be done in order for us for this one to run continuously. So this one now is running continuously. It will slowly accumulate up to the 2000 that we need. Yay! First little build completed. Next one. First we need to figure out what it is I want to make. And that's now inserters. That gets a lot more complicated. Because inserters need mechanical components. And it needs iron components. Mechanical components. What do they need? mechanical components they need iron components and copper so we actually need iron components for both and let's go in here and look at ratios i don't really care so much about the ratios but let's look at it anyway this is producing two per second this is consuming two per second so that's going to be one to one and over on this side is consuming one mechanical component every second and one iron component every second so if i just have my this one running at half speed and i can't adjust it but i'll just assume that it works in half speed then it'll consume one component and one copper per second and generate four mechanical components that's way more mechanical components than we need and um, but it'll still be it'll definitely be enough yeah okay so i can i can easily have a single a single component factory build what i need so first things first, I am going to make mechanical components. Yep, that needs copper, and I'll take this up. And there. So mechanical components, and this will make the iron components. I will take iron components in, and then they will go over here. And I will then take my copper from the long distance, and that should be good. It actually works. Now I need another one, and I'll just use the fact that this is a potential way of doing it that will be our inserter and we should now be able to get that from here and here that is working this is working there we go nice and i will put it into a box that's previously done oh that's not a good box it's too far away and there 
Ta -da! we have an automated production of inserters now. Now these are just, yeah, no, this is not a great build, but the, you know, in start of uh, Factorio, you also just put some assemblers down just to get the basic stuff going. And that's exactly what we do here. Later on, yeah, sure, big bus, magic build, all that stuff. Uh, what I then need to do is look at the next thing. And it should give us a pretty good idea about how this works in terms of automation. Now, I want to make processing units. I also need to make 1,000 of these. That needs iron. Okay, that's good. But it also needs uh, this uh, component. Okay, uh, let's have a look at that component. That re component is requiring some plant matter. No, some something here, plus some copper. So let's get it. This will be the components. Ah, well, I don't even know what it's called. Let's uh, get used to those names. This is the electric component. Yep, I can put that in here just, just because. Uh, actually, I don't really want to do that. Uh, this component here is going to be the processing units, which will... Mm, let's look at ratios afterwards. Let's look at ratios here. This one is... Whoa, super fast. Zero point. Okay, so you can make, you can make four per... Really? That's crazy. Um... So this will consume eight of the electric components per second. And this can make four components. Look up top, uh, electric components, four per half second. So it can make eight per second. And this one could consume eight per second. So this is in a one-to-one -one ratio. We need some iron, we need some copper, and we need some plant matter. So if I need this running at 100% speed, then I need two plant matter, per, or plant matter fiber per second. That will get back to that. So this means I need to get a long-handed inserter in here. I wonder if that's fast enough. I'm also pretty sure that I'm going to need two of these. Let's have a look if this is fast enough to uh, to keep up. It looks like it's fast enough here. Yeah, definitely fast enough. And... Then I am going to get it into a box, and I'll put that box right there. But I do do know that we have there's something we don't have there. But this thing here, right? This doesn't feel at all like 0 0.725 production speed. I guess the production speed of the assembler is not 100%. Let's have a look at it. What does it say? Uh, it doesn't say anything doesn't say anything about what it its crafting speed is but it feels not exactly fast speed and then it's time for us to go back and yank the crank that is sounds very much a euphemism for something else so uh, we'll just uh, let that uh, float in the air and uh, ignore that moving on to other topics right so this is working fine as long as I feed in some plant matter here which I don't uh, this is super slow. I don't get why this is. It doesn't say anything about the speed here. Ah, okay. Maybe that's a, that's a bug thing. Maybe that's me not uh, understanding it. But I need to get a automatic production of plant fiber. Now, isn't it just awesome that we already have a production here? There, we already have a production of plant fiber. And that plant fiber can now be converted if we just do a little thing. Mm, how do we do that thing? Well, I think I'll do... I'll do it like this. And then I do it here. And then I need to make... This will now be making plant fiber. How fast does the plant fiber make? Or how fast is... <laughs> uh, that is one second for one. So I'm going to have to have two of these to keep up. And then some inserters. Inserter. Inserter. What? Why is this one not working? Oh, I didn't choose to choose it yet. And output. Oh, no, no, no. That has to be filtered output. There. Filter output. Filter inserter. There and there. And this will now be filtering to get only the plant matter. And this will also be filtering plant matter as well. Great. And they will go in here. And from here they will go... Ooh, that's so close to being... Uh, 
right ah oh, that's one off it's one off ah oh, that's cool that's that's so close anyway here and then just lead it in that should be fast enough well fast enough fast enough and we have just a bit of this need 1000 more of that <laughs> just need 1000 and read there and there so what is this this is now a little factory nice i think this is a very nice factory and what i just need to do now is simply just uh, let it run for a bit so that we can accumulate these things now there's also the the point that you are probably saying well what about uh what about the smelters and the mining drills well you see it's a concept is the same as that, so I'll just uh, let this run, and then you know what? I can I can handcraft a few of these. It's only seventy of each. That's not so bad. So let's uh, see how this goes, and then be uh, come back when we are ready to activate our new our uh, our next milestone. And so I think it's time for us to gather our materials to see if we have enough to uh, unlock the next tier, and I do have enough here. Uh, let's sort this out and what do we have 500 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5 there we go that's 2000 and this is 1000 of that and over here it is 1000 of that and on top of that we should also have some other things let's get in here and try to unlock uh, let's see yeah here unlock let's see that goes in that goes in that goes in that goes in and that goes in Repair the terminal. See, that was easy. It seemed like a massive grind, but it wasn't actually that bad. Okay, well, so much for that. No, uh, no, um, nothing else. <laughs> what, what do we have now? Uh, Two thousand filter inserters, uh, five hundred planters, two hundred assemblers. 2000 cooling system and high voltage cable 1000 definitely just a, a bit of a grind just to get you going on on figuring out how to build a factory for s stuff like this let's have a look at what has unlocked in terms of tech so that's cooling systems we get cooling density lights cooling sonar tower uh terraforming faster drill that's pretty good portable assembler uh oh portable assembler speed nice uh, electric thresher and two about more inventory size nice uh, mass move mass transit system not available in alpha okay not just yet and at stack inserter capacity transportation swim oh suit speed not swimsuit a hover pack boost burst and hang rail claw interesting not available in alpha boo uh, we'll get the water generator and this is available so that means we can get a better than a crank to do uh, those kind of things as well really uh, interesting really interesting but you can also see that a lot of things are just not ready yet uh, now let's uh as as we just look at where we are what we can do also in terms of in here there's a lot of things that will just be unlocked as well well they won't be unlocked until we actually use more cores to unlock it but let's uh, do it a bit of a, a summary of where we are i think that it works pretty well with these kind of things i think there are some so it's it's quite enjoyable to make these things uh, my sort of main feedback in terms of this is that it it's basically factorium 3d like the fact that everything is called inserters fast inserters that kind of thing it's like oh it, i mean yeah so the thing about it is also that in factorio since you have a really a top-down view it's easy to place inserters while in the 3d view first person it's more difficult to place inserters sort of in between and sort of figure out are they on top of each other or are they next to each other that kind of thing and if you look at satisfactory and dyson's program not dyson's program then satisfactory they have sort of gone away with that because you have sort of direct insertion into machines and i think that it would actually be quite beneficial to have that like this thing here it's the, the whole factorial way of doing it seems a bit of a legacy thing with with inserters grabbing from this belt just the, just take this belt and just shove it in there be happy but you know that's probably something that's not going to happen um i think the part that's really missing is a lot of play testing which is great because that's where alpha comes in like it's completely impossible to figure out ratios between things um it, it's not really transparent so that's something that with more people playing it then 
a lot more feedback will come back and that kind of feedback will be more of a sense that, oh, okay, this one is confusing. This is uh, unintuitive. Of course, you can see that they've got the very basics going and then they started working on more machines. I think it has a lot of potential, especially considering it is a little indie uh, indie game team that is making it, not like a big studio or anything like that. Uh, but it also seems like a bit rough around the edges. I may play a bit more of this, but I don't think I'm going to be investing hundreds of hours at the current stage of the game. Uh, but I'll definitely be keeping an eye out for uh, future updates for this game. And as it sort of matures, I'll definitely be coming back and giving it another try at a later stage for sure. Uh, so I hope this sort of has been an interesting showcase of this uh, this game, of Tectonica. And I don't feel that it has like a potential for um, tens or tens or twenty hour uh, gameplay more of this. You can of course fill it in here, but then it will get into some things like the crank things, uh, the fact that a lot of things don't have uh, don't have icons yet, that kind of thing. But I think that there are a really cool ideas like the terraforming aspect. Uh, that's sort of the core mechanics. The terraforming aspects. The lighting is really good. Uh, the machines are working. So once you have those game systems in place, adding another adding more machines that do different things is presumably a less effort than having sort of a terraforming thing right because that's definitely a thing but it does need a lot more polish and uh, that's also what you would expect as a first version of an alpha uh, so i think that we'll be wrapping this one up here i hope you have enjoyed it uh, and you got inspired if you have the opportunity you can always just sign up for this uh, alpha thing i think that's all through the discord that you can uh, you can sign up for it. Uh, sorry, they don't have the details of it. It has provided a key for review and uh, testing purposes. Uh, but then uh, definitely a game that you should wishlist. And if you want to help out, oh, can I jump. Uh, if you want to help out a indie developer, then wishlisting things on Steam is a good way because that uh, that means it's going to be recommended more to other to other people sort of in the same category. So for people playing Satisfactory and Dyson's Program and Factorio and I don't know uh, Deep Rock. Uh, uh, Deep Rock Galactic, that kind of thing, will probably get this recommended if enough people are are wishlisting it. So consider wishlisting it uh, on Steam and uh, following the development. Thank you very much, everyone, for watching. I will be seeing you guys in another episode here on the channel. Thank you very much. Until next time, take care. And as always, stay effective.